All right. Looks good. Looks good. We had some air conditioning issues here at the warehouse today. I don't know what's going on. This was the first day in since we've moved in uh, that we've needed to turn on the air conditioner. It's very gross outside here in North Carolina. It's in the mid 80s, which isn't a huge deal, but the shock of mid 80s versus the last few weeks where you've needed jackets and things like that uh, is a bit of an adjustment. The pollen, one of the weirdest things about North Carolina is because we've got so many trees in the first week of April, every year, the trees open up their blossoms or whatever, the <laughs> pine cone things, and the, the pollen just flows. And it is disgusting. There is just yellow, like layers of yellow all over the place out there. Just a horrible, horrible, uh, horrible experience. Um, you go outside, my eyes are hurting. Uh, my throat hurts. I mean, you could tell that my throat is just, it's a gross feeling. Um, but as a result, it's been a little hot. So trying to turn on the air conditioner here, for whatever reason, the air conditioner, I haven't had to turn it on because it hasn't been hot yet. It didn't work so great. So I've got to call the uh, manager tomorrow and see if I can get somebody out here to sort out the air conditioner because it should be, should be cool in the office. And right now it's mid seventies, which is a little hot for me, but it is what it is. The show must go on. Um, Hey everyone, welcome to Gear Talk, episode 72. Uh, Gear Talk is the show that we do every other week where we talk about the geekier side of rollerblading. If you ever had to drill out rivets of your boots in order to put on the juice system so that you could have aftermarket frames, you're old like me, but you've come to the right place. Uh, Gear Talk is where we talk about real nerdy stuff for rollerblading. Uh, before I get started, I always like to thank the helmetinitiative.org for sponsoring our helmet giveaway. You know, I'm a big proponent of helmets. I think it's super important that everybody wears a helmet when they skate. It's not negotiable. Um, you fall down and you hit your head, it could be a really serious injury. You know, you fall down, you hit your wrist, you could break your wrist. You could break your knee, you could break your elbow, plenty of things you could break. Not saying you shouldn't wear any pads. But if you had to wear any pad, single pad, it would be your helmet because the risk of falling when you hit your head and getting a serious injury is pretty high. So I always recommend wearing a helmet. I know a lot of people out there might not be able to swing a helmet. You know, it's an expensive investment. They're 50 to 60 bucks. So we have partnered with the helmetinitiative.org to give away some helmets to people who need them. All you have to do is go to backtoblading.com slash helmet. I will put a link in the show notes. Put a link in the live stream, um, backtoblading.com slash helmet if you are interested in getting a helmet. Uh, if you can afford a helmet and you're just lazy, don't sign up. There are actually people out there who need a helmet. Um, I'm not gonna judge you, you know, if you've got money to put, you know, feed your kids or to put to wheels because you need to skate totally get it. The helmet is the last thing that you think about. It's like a luxury, right? It's like having insurance. You don't need it until you need it. And then when you need it, you're really thankful that you've got it. So we would like to help and try to take that out of the equation. Uh, back to blading.com slash helmet. Put in your information. I'll be giving away a helmet for this episode of Gear Talk. Uh, I pick somebody at random, so I don't need uh, the first person or the last person or any sort of a story. All I need is to know that you're interested in getting a helmet and I would love to help you out. So back to bladingcom slash helmet. Thanks again to the Helmet Initiative for helping us with some helmets and thank you to the Patreon supporters for helping us get the money so that we can ship them out to uh, people who win. Um, to get started, so um, talking about skates. So typically what I do is I talk about the skates that I'm currently on. And this was a weird week because I didn't get to skate the big wheels like I had planned. Uh, we did have some weather issues, so I had to skate indoors once. And then uh, I was able to go out and skate at Durham, um, but it was just not a great day. So I didn't feel up to doing big wheels after that, but I was able to skate my freestyle frames, which I've never skated before. So I have a lot to say about freestyle. Uh, here they are. Ugh. Oops. 
All right, so I am still on my Montre. This is going to be my last weekend on the Montres. I'm going to switch back to a flat setup. I'm going to skate the Montre Sways one last time. I really love these boots. I think I've been very vocal about it. I think these boots, for anybody who's interested in getting back into it, or who just can't seem to find a UFS boot that fits them right, that does everything that they want, I think this is the best all-around plastic shell boot, uh, UFS boot that you can get. Close second might be the Razor's SL, but this definitely just stock. Uh, it comes with a better liner. It comes with a 45 degree strap. I prefer the sole plate. It doesn't squeak as much. It's a really great skate. 170 bucks, I think, boot only, which is a crazy price for this. Um, it does not come with the Razor or the Rossi's RL1. I put those in aftermarket. I have some smelly good, smelly good balls in there. Um, it does not come with the RL1. It comes with the uh, MyFit Fat Boy liner for the Montre Sway. But I am really liking these RL1s. Um, I didn't think that I could tell the difference between a stock liner and an aftermarket liner. Maybe just because I had the intuition and I didn't have a great experience with it. But these are holding up really nicely. Let me take them out real quick. Show you what they look like. So the RL1 is the high-end liner from Rossi's. Now Rossi's has, over the years, made some of my favorite liners. Not specifically like, oh, I can't wait to get the new Rossi's liner. But whenever I skate Rossi's, I always say, hey, this is an amazing stock liner. They really do a great job with liners, and this is no exception. The RL1 is a very intuition-y feeling liner. The padding is very thin foam, but very solid foam. I'm not going to say memory foam. I don't know that it is heat moldable. It probably is, but I did not heat mold it. I just put it on my feet and I skated it. The uh, front is lace up, which I have mixed feelings about. I do think that the lace up liner is pretty nice though. Um, especially for this liner, it feels like it just sucks my foot in there really nicely. There are laces that go around the back. I'm not really sure if that makes any difference. I guess if you tied it up really tight, it would make a difference. Doesn't make a huge difference though. Um, they're nice and light. They're nice and responsive. They have neoprene at the toe, which is something that Intuition doesn't have for uh, on purpose. They don't want to put the neoprene at the toe. They just have the nice solid front. They want it to be a more form-fitting um, experience. The RL1 is a little bit more flexible. Now that might be good in some ways, bad in others. If you want the most responsive liner, you're probably gonna want an Intuition because it doesn't have the neoprene, it doesn't have any flex at all. So if it fits your foot perfectly, the Intuition is the way to go. For some of us though, it's a struggle to find an Intuition that fits them perfectly. And I'm sure that if you skated the Intuition more, you could break it in and it would mold to your foot more. I don't know that I have the patience for that, Maybe I should eventually get a pair of Intuitions and just skate them forever. But I really like this one. Um, I think this is a really great liner. It offers the support where I need it. Um, it's nice and light, nice and responsive. Fits great in the USD Sway. And they're like 170, 180 bucks. So it is as much as the boot itself, which is a bit crazy if you think about it, um, that you're paying, you know, <laughs> as much for this piece as you would for almost a complete skate without the frame. But if you can swing it, it is definitely a nice upgrade. Um, as for the frames, so I am skating the core frame uh, system two. I am on the freestyle frame. So these are the 50-50 freestyle frames. Full disclosure, I do own 50-50. Um, and I helped design these frames. Justin Thursday and I designed these. These were the original um, freestyle frames that Fitty Fitty came out with, but um, I asked Justin to make a few tweaks and see if he could make them a little better. So he made a few refinements and then transitioned them to the Core System version 2. And they skated almost as I, as I expected. Um, it is a huge grind surface. You can see all of the, so they're white frames, but you can see all of the grind area where I would hit the ledge and you can see where they're wearing this is my royale foot this is my left foot so when i jump on royale it's like this way and 
There are a few weird edges that I wasn't expecting. Um, you can see this edge here. I'm actually grinding where I feel like if it was tapered up all the way and tapered up all the way, it might be performing a little better. The groove is great. So when you do soul tricks or anything, absolutely no problems with that. I did find that sometimes I would get wheel bite, which is a crazy thing to think about. But when you jump on a ledge, you know, if the ledge is like here, right? Or I'll go sideways for you. Uh, do I have there? Uh, I have this little, this little bin. So as you jump sideways on a ledge, if you don't stay off of it, you can easily, you can see where that, that wheel touches. You can easily touch on that, this side of the ledge over here. I was skating the 65s to begin with, and that was the problem. So skating 65 millimeter wheels with this is probably not recommended if you're trying to skate ledges. If all you're doing is skating P-rail and transitions and stuff like that, you'll probably be fine. These were designed for 58s. So skating a 65 changes all of the uh, dynamics, all of the measurements. For me, I think the 60s are the right way to go. I think if you skated these with 60s, you would have a really good time. I had a great time as soon as I transitioned to 60s. It does require a little bit of break-in though. And that was something that I wasn't expecting. I've never skated freestyle before, so I really didn't have an idea of what these were going to skate like. Um, these are 3D printed. So this is the frame that I showed off in the video where I talked a little bit about the core system too and what 3D printing can do. These are a 3D printed frame. So this to compare is a injection molded frame. This is the prime frame that we are coming out with in May. Um, they are injection molded. So these are compatible with this system, but this is a mold that we made a, uh, made a new mold and they inject glass filled nylon into the mold and out pops a frame wall. This frame wall was 3D printed. So it takes a material called PLA Max and it draws lines. So a bunch of different layers so that it can draw the, draw the frame and it goes all the way up. And at the end, you've got this really nice, solid, bonded, perfect frame. They skate amazing. They slide amazing. And as you can see, I skated actual ledges and they hold up just fine to actual ledges. And the reason for that is that the core system two is an extruded aluminum core. So all of the weight on the wheels, all of the stress, all of the lateral movement is handled with the internal core system. That's what keeps the 3D printed frames from cracking under the stress. So take any idea that you might have, you can create a frame wall that will work with the core system two, and you shouldn't have any problem skating it. You won't have any cracking issues. So um, these freestyle walls, so we are currently selling them. Um, these are again, modeled after V1, the original ones. And then we made a few little tweaks, but for the most part, it's modeled after the original freestyle walls. Now we heard a lot of people love those original freestyle walls. So we didn't want to make any changes to them. We made a few little tweaks, but we really didn't want to make any changes to them. We wanted people to have the walls the way that they had the walls. But after skating them, I've learned that there might be some ways to make them even better. So something that we're going to do is we're going to have an upgrade program for the 3D printed walls. So what does that mean? Well, these walls are only available on our website through 5050frames.com. They will only be available through our website because we don't make, we don't make enough money in order to sell them to shops. If we wanted to sell them to shops, they'd have to be injection molded. Now that's not to say we won't make an injection mold out of this, but while they are still 3D printed, they won't be cheap enough for us to sell to shops and still make money. So while we sell them directly, we are going to have an upgrade program. So right now we are selling version one of the freestyle frames. They are the frames that I'm skating here. They are great frames, but I feel like we can do better. So everybody who ordered or is ordering the freestyle walls will be eligible for an upgrade at a reduced price if they like. You can stay with these walls. You can skate them all you want. And we will continue to have the files for these walls 
So if you prefer the V1s, you stick with the V1s. But I'm going to do some refinements and I'm going to see if I can make this an even better experience. And I'm going to release them as a V2. So there will be two versions of the freestyle walls. If you want to upgrade from your V1 to the V2, you'll get a discount on the V2. And that will be only available to people who uh, have purchased the V1. Now we can do this because we only sell directly to people on our website. So we have all of their information. So we will send you an email when we have the V2. It's going to be a while, to be honest. Um, we've got a lot of the V1s out there. And to be clear, I mean, I think people are going to love the V1s. But I feel like we can do better. And I want to make sure that this isn't a one and done sort of situation. One of the luxuries that we have with 3D printing is that we can make them on demand. So while we come out with a new frame, a, a new frame design, we can just start selling them immediately. We don't have to wait for a mold to be made. We don't have to go into production or anything. I could just click print and within a couple days, I'll have a brand new frame for people to purchase. So more information on that to come. The Core System 2 is going to be available in May. The freestyle frames will be available at launch. They are pre-order now in black and white, and I am printing through them as quickly as I can. I think I've got two more sets that I need to print. Um, so black and white are available now. And then if you want a color, bla uh, blue, red, and yellow, we'll have those available at launch, and it will be first come, first serve. So as soon as they come in, we'll start printing, and we'll have them sent out as soon as they're done printing. It takes about three days from start to finish to print two walls at 100% fill. So it is not a quick process, but the nice thing is that it's not a huge investment. We just click print, we let it do its thing. And then in three days, we send your frames off and then a couple days later, you'll have them and you can put them on your skates. So this is my last weekend with the Montres. I am going to switch over to the prime frames. I'm gonna be skating them flat because I love these frames. I love skating them flat. Very excited about skating one more time. Um, and then I'm going to switch back to my USD Carbons because I just love the USD Carbons. They're my favorite skates. I got to get back to the baseline of what my favorite skates are before I try any other new skates. All right. So those are the USD Sways. I'm honestly, I'm shocked that I like them so much. I did like the zooms and I feel like that's just... It's just a boot that works for me. I think the sole plate works well. I think the 45 degree strap works well. If you haven't given the Sways a chance, definitely worth doing. Um, it's a really quality hard shell boot. All right, let me get some water. And let's talk a little bit about K2. Never thought I'd talk about K2 on this show. I think I talked about the front streets a little bit and I talked about the history of the fatty a little bit but I didn't think that it would come back up because K2 kind of turned their shoulder to aggressive. Um, they still make uh, rec skates and they still make fitness skates and I think they still make trail skates and such. So it's not like they've turned their back on skating in general, but I think a lot of you out there are aggressive skaters and my focus is predominantly aggressive, though I do love all disciplines. I'm more of an aggressive skater. I would define myself as an aggressive skater. And to not have K2 as part of our industry is very weird. There was a time when K2 was the biggest skate company. You know, back when the fatties came out, they were in charge. Um, they had the most progressive skate. They had the best team. They had so much going for them. And then it just slowly started trickling out. I think the other companies started catching up. I think USD did a great job with the throne and really blew out you know, everybody's expectations of what a plastic boot could be because K2, again, was the soft boot. They were the first ones to do that soft boot technology. And then Rollerblade came out with uh, uh, the Dirks and uh, you know, eventually came out with the, uh, the Access and their UFS skin skates and such. There were plenty of different options out there. And K2 had this huge lead and then just kind of lost it. I'm not going to speculate why they lost it. Um, but I am going to say that around 2001, when UFS came out, I think they were kind of caught on their heels. 
and they didn't have a UFS boot for a while. In my recollection, the first UFS K2 was the K2 Nemesis. Now the K2 Nemesis is right around the time when I was leaving. It came out in 2003. That is about the same time that I was not super involved with the industry. So I didn't have, I never really had a chance to skate them. I never had a pair myself. I definitely wasn't as involved in the industry back then where I wanted to get all of the different skates. I was skating UFS Thrones, I think at the time. And before then I was skating the, uh, the Rollerblade uh, TRS Access. Those were my two like UFS skates that I really liked. And K2 was one of the slow ones to the party. Uh, K2 and Rossi's, I think, were the two that took the longest to go UFS. At the time, K2 was still making Backyard Bobs and 250s, these skates. Oops, Let's see if I can reach them. So these are the 250ccs. Um, these are, you know, what a K2 skate looked like back then. Um, it was a fatty, but with really different styled soft boot. It had that uh, two-piece sole system where it had, you know, the plastic area up here that also protected the toe. And then it had this heel area that was also the sole plate, which worked really well for them. Um, and then the cuff attached to the sole plate, so it was like a three-piece thing, and then the soft boot just kind of slid into all the whole system, glued down there, and then it was nice and set. And these were amazingly popular skates, but obviously they showed their age. And as soon as they weren't compatible with the UFS standard, I think people started saying, hey guys, are we gonna do this UFS thing? Cause the K2 frames are great, but I wanna try ground control, or I wanna try 50-50, or I wanna try able, or something like that. And K2 really didn't have an answer for that. So they, I don't know when these skates came out, probably around 2000 would be my guess. I know that the Backyard Bobs came out in like 2000, these skates. Oh, where are they? Uh, I do a better job. Oh, here they are. Backyard Bobs. Um, I know these skates came out, when did these skates come out? Around 98, 99 maybe? 98? Um, I want to say the timing was around the same time as the King 55, which was one of the all-time classic K2 skates um, that didn't really go anywhere. It was a very high cuff, very vert inspired skate, really cool looking skate. But again, K2 just kind of going off into their own direction. They were not UFS either. So there was really no way to swap out these frames. And you'll see the, the, the frames are very similar. I don't think there's much difference at all. Little differences, looks like maybe just little aesthetic sections, but not, not much at all. Um, however, they did come out with some UFS boots. So the first UFS boot that I knew of with the K2 was the K2 Nemesis. Um, it is a white and red boot. Uh, it is very similar to the Backyard Bob's um, insofar as it had, you know, the cuff and the sole area and uh, the heel area and the toe area and the soft boot. The main difference was that it also had a sole plate. That sole plate was then UFS. So there was a replaceable area. This, this area down here was all replaceable. And you would just put a sole plate on and you had T-nuts that came up from the inside and you could pop your UFS frames on. Right after the Nemesis came out was the first that I know of, the first K2 Pro Model skates. It's crazy to think that it took until 2004 for K2 to have Pro Model skates. Now they had Sesamora inspired skates. I don't know that they were technically Pro Models. I don't remember them being sold as a Pro Model. I might be wrong. Oh, I guess Blake Dennis. No, Blake's was after it was UFS. So it was the Grawl, wasn't it? So. Yeah, it was after, was it the Cootie? Was Blake Dennis the first? Somebody correct me in the chat if I'm wrong. Blake Dennis probably was the first. So that was a Cootie. Was that UFS? Yeah, no, that was Rossi's. What am I thinking of? Not K2. They didn't have anything with K2. They didn't have any pro models with K2. K2 just kind of did their own thing. I'm getting all confused with Rossi's and 
K2, I don't know why. Um, so the first pro model ugh, is one heavy sum bitch. <laughs> but this is the Pat Lennon K2 Nemesis boot. It is crazy. So <laughs> try to take yourself back to 2004. I don't know how many of you were skating back then, but skating was on its way down. So we didn't really know that it was in the decline, but it had just started getting pulled from the X Games. It was, you know, I think they killed the street competition, but they still had vert in 2003, 2004. And then I think we were completely pulled out of the X Games 2004, 2005. So this timing was right around when we were about to get kicked out of the X Games. So K2 comes out with a brand new skate, the Nemesis. Then a year later, they had two pro models. They had the Pat Lennon, which is this one. This is actually the 2005 model. 2004 model with slightly different colorway. Very similar look, though. And they had the Eric Shrine, which is a very different colorway. But same Nemesis style, same Nemesis boot. And that was like 2004 when both of those came out. 2004, 2005. The... Nemesis. So, as I was saying, um, how do I show this? So, this boot, <laughs> this boot's falling apart. I had to do a lot to get this to hold together so that I could show it to you. I have another one over here that I'll show you that is in pieces. Let me show you the one in pieces. So, let's start with the sole plate. So, this was the K2 Nemesis sole plate you can see that it is a very similar sole plate to what we get now with the USD Carbons or the USD 7 or the Seba CJ or I guess the God's Skate uses the uh, USD 7's sole plate so it doesn't really matter. What's interesting about this though is it comes up so far on the sides. So typically the sole plates now, they'll go, you know, maybe half an inch up, like three mil, these went all the way up on the sides. So this was the entire sole area, not just the sole and the Royale groove, but it, it caught like all the way up here. It was like if you were doing set slides or something like that. Very tall. Um, the frames. So these are the Pat Lennon Nemesis frames. Now I actually, I don't know how I got this, but I have an actual nemesis frame so this was the frame that came on the nemesis this is never been skated i don't know how i got this um but you can see it's the same frame um this was k2 flaunting their patented h block <laughs> that you could remove so the removable h block was a k2 patent and this was their their flex that hey yeah we've got a h block didn't really do anything I don't know why they had a removable H-block on this frame. There was no, as you can see on this one, brand new. There was no wheel bite protection. There was nothing going on with this. It's not like it was a different material either. It was just a big middle finger to the rest of the industry saying, we can do this and you can't. Sorry, razors or ground control. You guys are going to have to stop doing that. Sorry, Solomon. You're going to have to stop doing that. Um, but it's a, you know, nothing, nothing fancy UFS frame. It's just a UFS frame. This was the first K2 UFS frame that I know of. Um, it features the K2 six-way rocker system, uh, which they currently have in their uh, recreational skates they had in the front streets and the unnaturals a few years back. So it had a nice rocker on it. The wheelbase looks normal, like 270 or so. Nothing crazy. It had this weird, like, supplemented sticker sort of thing on the side. I don't know if you can really see that, but they had these full graphic things, probably because of their snowboard and ski relationships. They had the technology that they could put all these graphics on the sides. They're really just like stickers though. Um, you can see this one's kind of coming off. Not sure what the process is, but that's, that's what they did. I'm sure they didn't slide very well either. I'm sure they didn't test them to see how well they slid, but that's K2 for you. Um, moving up the stack. So we've got the boot. So this is what the boot looked like. So this is the sole. This buckle just fell out. 
This is the sole. So this big, huge sole plate slid on. <laughs> I'm dropping things. Another part of the buckle came out in some dust. Um, the big, huge part of the sole came on and then the T-nets would go underneath into the boot. There were two, four, six, eight bolts that fastened this sole plate on and then the UFS bolt. So it wasn't going anywhere, but this was a replaceable part. I don't know that they sold them aftermarket, but it was definitely something that they could change the color, potentially the material to make them unique for each model. Uh, but a really good design. Um, I mean, it looked like a really solid Royale groove. If you look at that, it's a really just nice, nice catch there. Um, nice wide sole. I mean, this is a good two knuckle, three knuckle wide sole compared to uh, the USD Sway, which is the skate that I'm skating now. I mean, it's the same width as the Sway, maybe a little bit wider, which nothing to worry about there. I mean, you're not going to miss soles with this thing. Uh, the heel, you can see how far out that heel comes. It's like this big step that comes out that you, like a lunch tray that you can put in the back of your skate. And then going all the way up, you've got the biggest, most padded boot K2 ever made. So this thing was fierce. I don't have my calibers with me, but you can see how thick this liner was. So it is a single piece integrated uh, liner. It is a basically like a boot. And funny enough, over the years, it's come out. So this is what the boot looked like. <laughs> it was a just a standard boot. It didn't have the sole area. The sole area in this case was this foam that was glued to the bottom of this sole mounting area. Oh, there's a little spider running around too. Uh, glued to the bottom of this mounting area. So this sole went all the way in here. And over the years, it's just come apart, peeled out. It's not, not great anymore, but super padded, super bulky, um, very similar to like snowboard boots. You would just put your foot in there, strap it on. Um, we didn't talk about the buckle yet, but this is the buckle. This thing is like straight out of a snowboard. Um, these are bindings. You can see there's the two dots that are just like snowboard bindings. Uh, the other side, where the other side there it is. The other side looks like just a regular standard buckle. But you can see this huge, huge binding in the front. So not a lot of huge buckles like this in skating anymore. It really looked like snowboard boots. Again, this is what it looks like all put together. So you can see that huge buckle up top. Really cool very unnecessary. Um, future models didn't have this huge buckle. I don't know what the huge buckle was for. It's weird that they didn't have a 45 degree strap on this model. I don't know that there was one and maybe it just didn't come with this boot, but I would think that something like this, you would want a 45 degree strap to really cinch your foot in there. I know that there were future ones based off of this Nemesis boot that they did have 45 degree straps. So it's definitely something that was possible, but for whatever reason, they didn't put on this skate. Here's a Monsters, Monster Energy sticker though. I don't know if that was part of the sticker, part of the skate or what, but I mean, do your, do your thing. Um, one of the coolest things that I was reminded about is that these liners have a little pocket. So there's a zippered pocket up here so that you could stash your weed in there, I guess, or your tools or your wallet and keys, or, I mean, it's pretty substantial. So you could put whatever you want in there. Um, if I remember correctly, USD had those as well for a bit, but then again, K2 being these corporate guys, they purchased the company Kangaroo, which was a shoe company that made mostly kids shoes. They purchased Kangaroo and then they said, well, we now have the patent for the zipper pocket in the tongue, so you can't do it anymore, ha ha. 
That was the sort of company K2 was back then. It was really fun to work with K2. But having a little pocket up there, I wonder if that patent is still there. It's a really cool idea, especially, you know, when you go out skating distance and all you need is like your car keys or something like that, a little bit of cash or something. It would be really nice to have a way to put something on a skate, a tool, you know, you, one of your wheels gets loose or whatever. I saw somebody on Facebook post that they used a stick to tighten their, tighten their wheels. If you had a little axle in there that would, or a little hex key, that would be really nice. So yeah, this was the Pat Lennon Nemesis boot. This came out in 2005. There was one that came out in 2004. There was also an Eric Shrine skate that came out in 2004, I believe, as well as 2005. Shortly after this in 2005, late 2005, um, there were two models that were planned that never came out. They leaked the photos um, and you could see them online if you did searches. One of them was the Yasutoko Brothers skate. So that was a black and white boot. It was based on this Nemesis. It did have a 45 degree strap and it was one skate for two people, which would have been an industry first, I guess. I don't think they've ever done that. I guess the Esco Zoo skate is kind of for a bunch of people, uh, but it's kind of weird to have a pro model for two people. And so they're just saying, hey, Eito, hey, Takeshi, here's two skates, one for each of you because you're both so amazing and the best rollerbladers ever. But they didn't, they just said, well, you're both brothers, so we'll give you one skate. And the other one was Ben Weiss. Now, Ben um, was skating for 50-50 at the time. And Ben was going to have 50-50 frames. If you look on the, um, on the internet, you can find Ben Weiss K2 skate. You can find some pictures of it. And it does have the 50-50 balance frames, which is kind of neat. Uh, never happened, though. So K2 around 2005 got the freaks and said, nope, we're not going to do these anymore. We're going to pull back from aggressive um, the first time. And they stopped making this style of skate. I don't know what happened to these boots. I don't know if the Nemesis ever came out again. I know that the next few skates were like the Varsity and such. That didn't look like, again, I wasn't in blading at the time and trying to find this information was difficult. But I saw the Varsities, they looked more like the Style Point Bob style skates, not like the Nemesis skates. And then they had the Unnaturals and the, uh, the Front Streets, which were not the same. You know, they're more fatty style. They had the Fatties come back as a UFS skate. These things, oh, where'd they go? These ones. So these were 2012. And this was a UFS fatty. Uh, but again, it doesn't look anything like this. Nothing, nothing similar here. So I think this boot is a very short-lived K2 experiment. Um, came out in 2003 as the Nemesis. Had two pro models in 2004, 2005. And then 2006, I don't think it was available anymore. I'd love to hear if I'm wrong. If you have more information on these skates... Uh, please let me know in the comments and let me know in the live stream. I'd love to learn more about this. This is the era that's really difficult to do research. Um, there's not a lot of information out there. Um, I was able to do a little bit trying to find these skates, but for whatever reason, um, I didn't find like a chronological order of K2 skates. You know how that guy does the chronological uh, look back of Solomon and Rems and things like that. I don't think he's done K2 yet, so I don't know about these skates. But if you know information, I'd love to learn. Um, I'm fascinated by these skates. They are huge snowboard boot style skates. I don't think they would work well nowadays, but they sure were different. And I love that K2 just went for it. Um, it was a very corporate synergy style skate. They also, funny enough, 2003, they had the Nemesis come out. 2004, there was a snowboard released by K2 called the Nemesis. Who would have thought, right? Probably had Mountain Dew and Monster Energy drink on it. <laughs> anyway, so that's K2. Um, I do hope that they come back, to be completely honest. Um, I think that K2 brings um, some more validation to Aggressive. Um, you know, I, I know that Rollerblade's working on a new skate, and when Rollerblade comes back uh, stronger than ever with a brand new skate, it's going to make waves, um, not just in 
our little pockets, but any place that Rollerblade brand skates are distributed, they will be picking up this new skate. Same with K2. If you go to a big block, a big box uh, sporting goods store that carries K2, they might have aggressive skates. That gives us validation that aggressive is actually a discipline of skating that people should pay attention to. That helps kids see it and they say, ooh, I can jump on rails and I can do jumps with these skates. It's a good thing to have K2 in our industry. I just wish that they would stick around and they would do more pro models because to be honest, I mean, Pat and Eric are great guys. I wish that they had more of them though. All right, my laptop is full of crumbly K2. Hope that was interesting to you. I learned a lot doing research on this skates. I forgot your name, but thank you for sending me those K2s. Um, There's a guy who was cleaning out his closet uh, or his garage on his way to move. And he said, hey, do you want these? And I'm like, dude, I've never seen those. Absolutely, I want them. Let me give you some frames or some wheels. And he's like, no, 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 no. Like, don't worry about it. I'll send them over. And I was like, you're awesome, thank you, um, and I got the skates. So I got those earlier this week, uh, or end of last week, I think, um, and I'm really thrilled that I was able to share them with you. All right. I would love to answer any questions that you might have. You know, I love aggressive, but I also do big wheel. Um, if you need any advice on uh, buying skates, if you need wheel advice, profiles, if you're getting back into skating and you're overwhelmed by the amount of skates on the wall behind me, um, let me know what questions you might have. Make sure that you tag back to blading in the questions so that I can see it while I scroll through. I will scroll to the top. My voice does hurt a little bit today because of this pollen, so I'm not going to go super long today. I'm already at, what, 42 minutes? So definitely um, maybe another 10 minutes. But if you have questions, I would love to uh, answer them. If you are watching this in the future, um, I always read my comments, so please make sure that you leave a question in the comment if you have one. You can always get in touch with me on the website, backtoblading.com slash contact us, I think, is the way to do that. And I'm really good about responding to emails. I'm not super good about responding to social. Facebook and Instagram are more places where I put content and I talk in comments, but when you send messages, I don't like their system for handling messages. It gets a little overwhelming and I tend to just delete them all. So if um, you were trying to get a hold of me through Instagram, it's, I mean, good luck. Uh, it might work. Uh, but if you really need to get a hold of me, uh, email is probably the best way to do it. And that is through uh, our website. Or just leave a comment on one of the videos. I always read the videos. All right, let me scroll to the top, see if there's any questions. Probably not a lot of questions this week, though. All right. Um, Alex Paz, I will be running 58 millimeter and 60 millimeter wheels with the new prime frames, but will be rolling anti-rocker. Will the they be enough right height on 909s and Volo, Vibralux, and the gold pair. Um, so if you are skating prime frames anti-rocker, you will not have any problem skating 60s. So the 60 millimeter wheels will... So the way the prime frames work... Do I have the prime? Hmm, I don't. I have these. It's the same. So the way the prime frames work walk you through a little bit of the measurements. The middle of this wheel, middle of the axle, so these axles are 14 millimeters this way and 10 millimeters this way. If you look at the other ones, they're 14 millimeters round. So if you look at the middle of the wheel and you go up, it is 33 millimeters. What that means is the biggest wheel you can fit without hitting anything, if the bottom of your sole was completely flat, the biggest wheel you could hit, you could fit, would be technically 65.5, 66 maybe. You would start rubbing with 66s. We made it so that you could say 65s, no problem. So you could skate anything smaller than that, no problem. It will fit. You can't fit 72s in there or 68s unless 
you have a little recess. If you look at the sways, you see there's a little recess underneath the sole plate where the wheels touch. And that gives the wheel a little bit of room to go up into the frame, which means you can ride wheels that are a little bit bigger than 65. So you could say 68s on these, probably even skate 72s on a lot of skates. Probably skate 72s, no problem, on the 909s. Now where it gets weird with height is you want to be you want to be cautious of how low the frames go. So when you're skating, if these frames go way too low, say you were skating with 54s, right? So this is a 60. Say you were skating with a 60 a 54, that would be three millimeters less on each side. So three millimeters down. The angle that you would get when you're skating, you got to be worried that you're not going to rub on the side of the wall. So when you do strides, you don't realize how low your foot goes when it strides. If you're pushing off, if you rub on the wall of the frame, you're going to slip out. And that is a not a good feeling. So I wouldn't have any problem recommending 58s or 60s. I've skated these frames 58 flat and had no problem with them. Obviously, 60s are no problem. I'm skating 60s here. This is the same as the prime um, the prime frame walls. So you're going to have no problem skating 60s. I wouldn't skate anything lower. I think 56 would be okay, but it's pushing it. Anything smaller than 56, I don't think you could find them, but anything smaller than 56, probably going to be pushing it. I think 58s are going to be fine, anti rocker. And I think 60s, obviously, absolutely no problem, anti rocker. Hope that answered your question. Um, wheel sizes are weird. You can always. It's hard to tell what wheels will work best. I think frame designers do our best so that we can accommodate as many different sizes as possible. And we kind of think, well, what if somebody were riding 65 millimeter wheels? Well, would it work? And that's where we get our rating system. And they look at the different profiles of wheels to make sure that when you put the profile in, when you lean over, are you going to rub on the side of the wall? A lot of time is spent testing that stuff, especially now that we have 3D printers, printing things out, testing them and see where the wheels rub and where they don't rub. I think 58s are fairly common though. I don't think you're going to have any problems with those. Great question. Uh, Mr. Darren 25, great find. I also own the Eric Shrine model. How much do those weigh compared to modern skates? I actually have my scale. Let me see if I can grab it. I'm going to unplug real quick and I'll measure it for you. So many skates on the ground. All right, I'm back. I have so many skates on the ground, I was tripping over skates getting through here. Um, so I have my scale. Let me measure these boots for you. So I'm going to measure the boot that does not have the frame on, so it'll be boot only. It's not going to include the buckle. Actually, it can include the buckle. Where'd the buckle go? I think I have the buckle. Yeah. So this will include everything. It'll just be a boot only measurement. All right, so boot only grams, please. Boot only, those are 1,552 grams. And this is a size 10. The thing is worn out, but I could tell from the sole plate, it was the 910 sole plate. So 1550 is the weight. Let me see what else I have boot only. Oh, oh I have the rims. I could compare to the rims. That would be a bloodbath though. I think the rams are super, super heavy. So 1552, 1558. So the rams are 1706. That's how heavy the rams are. These are the heaviest skates I own. I do not recommend rams. They're too heavy. Uh, what other skates do I have? Let's do this. Let's be fun. Let's check the USD Aeon Complete. 
So this is the USD Aon 60 with 58 millimeter wheels with bearings, um, with liners and 45 degree strap. 1680. So this skate is 100 grams more than this skate boot only, the Pat Lennon's boot only. That's not to say that the Pat Lennon uh, Nemesis are heavy, but these are super light, super light skates. I don't think I have any other boot onlys, but that is not bad. Um, it's not as heavy as the uh, REMS, which is the heaviest skate I have. So I wouldn't expect it to be super heavy compared to the competition. Uh, it probably weighs in around 18, 19 uh, with frame and wheels and such. Great question. I was wondering about weights. I never, never look at the weights very much. Awesome. More good questions. Um, Killbot 350. Um, I have an unused set of John Ortiz medium wheels. Would they be okay if I skate them? They would be okay. Um, I don't know how long they would last. I don't know if the quality would change after they've been sitting for 15, 20 years. Um, I probably wouldn't skate them. I would probably hold on to them. I would, if you don't want them, you could find a collector that might pick them up. Um, and they might pay, you know, 50 bucks or something enough for you to get a brand new set of wheels. Urethane technology has come a long way. Um, when people get back into it, I always say, you know, you can skate your own skates, but I always recommend getting new bearings and getting new wheels. And the reason is the bearings that we were using back in the days were probably Killer Bees ABEC 3, which were expensive at the time, but they were crazy bad. Um, Get yourself some new bearings, you'll feel great. Get yourself some new wheels. Brand new urethane is amazing. The technology has come so far. Get some, you know, undercover wheels. I always say fitty fitty wheels, but get yourself some quality wheels. Spend good money. You're going to have an amazing experience skating them again. As for the old wheels, people love to say that Cosmos still ride amazing. I don't know. I've never skated Cosmos currently. I don't know that they're going to ride amazing or not. Um, I haven't heard a lot of good things about other wheels. I think, you know, plastics, urethanes, they degrade over time. So I probably wouldn't skate them, but I don't think there's anything wrong with skating them. I think they're better suited to sell them to somebody who wants them uh, and then use that money to buy some new wheels. Great question. I've never had that question asked. Um, juice system. Just got some Compass 72 frames. Thank you for the support. And loving them. Any plans to bring them in white? We are looking at doing different colors. Um, stay tuned. We brought in a ton of frames to begin with. And the Compass frame is a lot of fun for big wheels on aggressive skates. I don't know how quickly I expected them to sell. But we're almost out of 80s. And as soon as we run out of 80s, I think we will do another order and we'll mix in some whites. So don't have any speculation, but I would assume by the end of summer, we'll probably have some different colors. Um, it's going to be a while though. Uh, they didn't sell super fast. <laughs> um, we brought them in what, November, I think, December. So um, I'm happy with the way that they sold, but they're not selling so fast that I have to reorder right now. And as soon as I do have to reorder, I will bring in different colors. And thanks for the support. It's awesome to see more people skating, not just walking up to grinds and jumping on ledges like uh, like we always we always do. Skating is amazing. Um, even if you just put big wheels on and skate down your street, you're gonna have a lot of fun doing it. Sylvan asks, I am getting some Joe Atkinson Sola frames for a flat setup and looking for the best wheel profiles for the 256 in the middle. What do you recommend? 56 is hard. Um, what do I recommend? So they had the dead uh, collab with Basement. Those are the best 56s I know of. They are a rounded 56. They are AEND urethane. They are quality. 
I have not skated the Go Project or the Revolver 56s. The profile looks good, but I haven't skated them, so I can't speak to the quality. But I think the profile-wise, that's probably where I would go. Most 56s have a very square profile, and I'm not a huge fan of that. I think a 56 millimeter wheel should be rounded. Um, we are working on 56s, but we don't have any for you yet. Uh, I think they're going to be fun, uh, especially on balance frames, especially on low profile frames, but I don't have any 56s yet, and I don't have them in production yet. Uh, it's something that we're looking at and we're working on, but it's gonna be a little while until we have them out. Um, so I would look at Revolver or Go Project for 56s. Uh, if you could find the basement collabs with Dead, I would get those. Otherwise, that's about it. I don't know. Does Famous make a 56? I don't think so. I think they make a 58, a 60, and a 64. Yeah, 56 is a weird size. Maybe you can go bigger? I don't know. It's weird. Whenever you have to mix wheel sizes, that's why I'm a... I, I love my wish frames, but I'm hesitant because trying to find the profiles that work perfectly and try the hardnesses and the wheels that match. And it's like, if you can just get, you know, eight of the same wheel, then it's easier. I always recommend eight of the same wheel. Good luck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Eddie F and D, shall we all spam K2 to come back? Yeah, good luck with that. They don't care. They couldn't care less about us. Um, they are, the K2 Skates Instagram still posts um, fairly regularly and they do a lot of rec skating. So again, nothing against K2. I think that it would be great if they came back, but I honestly don't think they care very much about aggressive. I don't think it was a money maker for them since the X Games, you know, went down and, you know, they lost their vert uh, team. I mean, think of who skated K2. It was both the Asatokos, Sesamora, um, I mean, I'm sure there were who uh, uh, there were two other uh, vert people. Matt Lindemuth, I think, skated K2. Uh, uh, Sean Robertson skated K2. Ben Weiss skated K2. I mean, they, they had a great team, but it was a competition team. And as soon as competitions died out, they didn't know what to do. They didn't want to sponsor like real street comps. Like, can you imagine K2 sponsoring IMYTA or something like that? <laughs> I think they did Winter Clash, but. That's weird. Like, what were they doing there? I don't know. It's a weird corporate company that doesn't quite get aggressive. And I think that's fine that they don't get aggressive. They handle a different market. It would be great if they had more of a footprint in aggressive, though, because I feel like they could make a really strong impact for the future of aggressive if we could open it up to more eyeballs. And I think they would be really good at that. But don't spam them. Don't tell them I sent you. <laughs> don't get me in trouble. Oh, Joseph. Hey, thank you so much. Um, thanks for hosting these back to blading. Uh, these are great. Thank you so much. Uh, it means a lot. Thanks for the super chat. All of the super chats go to the helmet initiative. Um, so your donation will go to getting somebody a helmet. And that means a lot to me because again, I'm on a crusade to make sure that helmets are everywhere. Uh, and people choose not to wear a helmet because they don't want to wear a helmet, not because they can't afford one. So again, another plug, helmetinitiative.org to learn more about an amazing organization that does helmet giveaways. They've been helping us out with helmets. If you need a helmet, backtobleeding.com slash helmet. We will be giving away a helmet to somebody during this episode. Um, I'll leave the form up all night. But um, if you go there, fill out your information. If you need a helmet, I would love to get you a helmet. I can't give everybody a helmet but I can give away one helmet a show. And thank you for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Um, Kevin Silva, I pre-ordered medium prime frames. Thank you for the support. Uh, should I have ordered a large frame for my medium 909s? That is a great question. Here is a 909. This is a medium 909. The prime frame, is this long. Can I fit that in with the wheels? So this is the sizing of the prime frame. It's 270 from one to four. If you like this style, this is a medium. I don't have a 909 with a medium frame. 
Do I have a medium frame in here? I don't. I don't think I have any medium frames. These are mostly frames that I skate, so I don't have a medium frame in here. But this is what the 909s look like with the large frame and a medium 909. Now, is it going to be too small? No, it's not going to be too small. UFS is UFS. You could fit any skate with any frame. So long as they're UFS, they will work. Will you feel like you're, they're too small? Maybe. Um, it, I think it depends on what frames you're coming from. Um, the medium prime frames are 250 millimeter. So what I would do is whatever frames you're on now, I would try to measure those frames and see where they come. If they're 250 or if they're 270, where are they closer to? Either way, with a medium skate, you will get used to either of them. If you are skating any rocker, you might prefer a shorter wheelbase, which would be the 250. If you're skating flat, you might prefer the longer wheelbase, which is the 270. A few ways to make a shorter wheelbase work for you. If you want a shorter wheelbase, if you're skating a shorter wheelbase and you're skating any rocker, skate some more flat wheels. These are our uh, face style wheels. So they are a, like a bullet profile with a flat top. Those are going to be more nimble and responsive. So if you're skating this with a medium, uh, sorry, with, yes, with a medium prime frame, a shorter wheelbase, you're going to skate, you're going to turn much faster. If you're skating with a flat wheel, like the undercover 58 millimeter wheel, where it's more of a square, you're going to turn much uh be much more stable. So I think with a shorter wheelbase, you're going to want a more square wheel. It gives you more surface area and it's harder for you to turn, but because the wheelbase is shorter, it balances itself out. If you have a long wheelbase and you're skating anti rocker, you might want to try something like one of these face style wheels that has a very small tread, a nice rounded bullety profile that will give you a little bit more nimbleness when you're skating. Honest answer though, you didn't do anything wrong by buying a medium frame for your medium 909s. That is the bubble size. I've skated these skates with medium frames and with large frames. When I skate any rocker, I prefer the medium frame. I think there's a lot more whip and zip with the medium frame, a shorter wheelbase, but you probably won't know until you try it. Um, I can guarantee you that you won't have a problem selling those frames if they don't fit you super well. Um, and I'll even say, if they don't fit you super well, I don't have any larges left. I think they're all sold out. But I can do everything that I can to help you out and swap out with the large frames if you actually wanted a large frame uh, after you skate them real briefly. Don't do grinds or anything like that so that I can still sell them. But if you go out there and you skate and just don't mess up the frames and see if it's too short or too long for you, let me know uh, and we'll make sure that we work something out. But I, I wouldn't worry about skating the mediums on the medium. I think you'll really like it. Um, but if you do feel that, make sure that you use wider profile wheels. Wider profile wheels will give you a more stable, um, stable ride with a shorter wheelbase. It's a really good question. We don't talk much about wheelbases. Um, I need to do a video about that. I do have planned a series of videos where we dive into these topics very quickly but succinctly. So I'm working on a video now about how to know when to rotate and change your wheels. I know it's a silly question that a lot of you probably already know the answer to, but you wouldn't be surprised how many people ask, what should I do? My wheels are starting to squeak or I'm starting to lose grip on my wheels uh, and they don't know how to rotate. They don't know when to replace them. So I want to do videos that can deal with those topics that I talk about in Gear Talk, uh, but in a very bite-sized morsel. So I'm going to be working on that. I think wheelbase uh, is definitely something to look into because people don't even think about it. I know when we started skating, I would just buy whatever frame fit my skate. And I didn't know the difference between 250 and 270. And now it seems like 250 mil and 270 mil are like the standard lengths for UFS frames. Never used to be like that. You know, it was just whatever frames you got. Solomon had like five different frames. I'm sure you've seen the picture of the uh, 
the small Solomon frame and the large Rossi's 13, size 13 boot. I mean, UFS is brilliant, but you definitely need a guide <laughs> to help you figure out how long the frame should be. Great question. Um, Ken Wolpert, how long after a skate is discontinued? Does a skate company stop making parts? <laughs> it's a good question. For example, the 2019 USC Shadow. Um, geez, I don't know. So um, the USC Shadow is coming back. Um, I saw Eugen skating his, so I know that he has a pro model coming. That will be the new Shadow. The parts might be compatible, they might not. The nice thing about Shadow is that there were so many parts out there because they sold so many of them over the years that you could probably find parts that are replaceable for your skates. Typically though, if a skate is discontinued, that skate company doesn't make any more parts for that skate. This is why I'm a big proponent of open sourcing and 3D printing because there needs to be a way if you lose something for you to get back and skate or do something with it if you don't want to buy a new one. Um, I think, you know, making replacement parts is super important and it shouldn't be up to the manufacturer only to keep that stuff in stock. Typically when, you know, sole plates is probably a perfect example. When you make a skate, chances are the skate companies will make as many sole plates as they have boots. And that's crazy. <laughs> they don't make extras, you know, they don't make extra sole plates for shops. Like if you're making a thousand pair of skates, make an extra thousand pair of sole plates. That's not going to cost you much. You know, at that scale, that's not going to cost you much. Keep them around. And every time you do them, make a thousand extra, like juice blocks. Perfect example. Whenever I do balance frames, I make a hundred extra juice blocks in that color. Now I've got boxes of juice blocks. They don't sell super fast because they're specific for a single frame and they come free on the frame. So it's only people who want to accessorize. But I got hundreds of them because I know that I'm never going to do this color again. So I want to make sure that I have a replacement, at least a bunch of replacements so that I have parts if somebody wants them or if they want to put red juice blocks on white frames, which is a killer look. I did white frames two years ago. I'm not going to do them again. So how am I going to get those red, you know, that red material to do juice box? I'm not. So I wanted to make sure that I got extras. I don't know that skate companies do that as much as they should. As for your specific question though, with the USD shadows, I think there is good news coming. I think that they will have replacement parts when the new USD shadows come out, but I don't know. I don't know what their plan is. I sure hope so though. All right. Um, misspelled, but I see you, Jenga one. When are you getting a pair of gods? I actually looked at the new ones. If you saw the, the FM3s um, with the white and the red, they look pretty good. I mean, I like my Montres. I never thought I would like these Montres. This is a lot of look, but I bet I could pull off the gods. So I'm gonna look into getting a pair. Um, I went to pre-order and they weren't shipping until May. And they were going to charge like 40 bucks for shipping. And I was like, that's crazy. Like I could give somebody a helmet for that price. So what I'll probably do is I'll get them from Oak City, which is my local skate shop. Um, and, you know, just pick them up, which will save me some shipping. I'll have to pay tax, of course, because it's in North Carolina. But I would much rather do that than, uh, you know, just spend 40 bucks on UP UPS. So, yeah, gods are coming. Um, I haven't ordered them yet, but that is my goal. Um, Pat Winner 20, have you heard anything in the industry about Dre Powell's new skate company? I have not. That was a thing, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't know what Dre's doing. Um, I don't know Dre Powell. I met him once. I don't know him. Um, I don't know what he's working on, but I remember he was working on his own thing two years ago, maybe. I haven't heard anything since. So my hunch is that he made some samples and then realized how expensive it would be and just didn't do it. That would be my hunch. Uh, 
I, I don't know though. Sorry. If I hear anything, I'll let everybody know. Um, Bim Gaming says, should I move up to 65 millimeter or 60 millimeter for some really rough street skating on an anti setup? I love skating 65's anti rocker. I think that's a really fun ride, especially on crappy concrete. Um, you know, the, the tarmac that has the little rocks sticking up. 65's works really well. Um, the 65 also gives you more coast. So when you get to speed, you slow down slower. So if you're in like 58s, you get to speed faster and you slow down uh, faster. You get to 65s, it might take you a little longer to get to speed, but then you slow down slower because it's bigger, captures more energy, and it rolls longer. I don't know why you wouldn't. Um, I think 60s is the minimum that I would skate anti rocker. 58s are fine, uh, but I love skating 60s anti rocker. If you're at all concerned about the cement, 65s is the way to go. Sylvan, hey, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it. Um, again, everything goes to the Helmet Initiative, so I, I, I love being able to give more money to people. So thank you so much. Um, I hope that I answered your question. All right, my voice is starting to go. Um, J. Mauricio Marches Ortega, um, and one review of the Flying Eagle in Keto with your freestyle frames. That would be amazing. You know, I've thought about the Enkido. The problem with the Enkido is I don't know that I'm going to like it. <laughs> I guess that's why I do reviews. Uh, I, I, there's nothing compelling for me about that skate. I don't feel like it's, I don't know. I don't feel like it's ready. Um, I know Be Free skates them and loves them. Uh, I don't know that they've worked enough on that skate to have it ready for review. Like I saw Be Free set up some wish frames and they were like shifted back a bit. Seemed very weird. Um, I know that they don't use UFS. They use an M6 bolt instead of an M4 bolt or an M8 bolt instead of an M6 bolt. It's a big bolt. It just seems like they aren't ready for what I want. Like I feel like I would destroy that skate on a review. And I don't want to do that yet. Like I want to give them another round to make a revision before I review it. I, I, again, I mean, just my opinion. Um, if they come up with an Keto do two, I'll probably do it. I am looking at getting the new triggers, uh, the Jeff Downness ones, because I've heard that they've made a lot of changes, and that again is the reason why I want to review it. They made a lot of changes. It's more, you know, compatible with UFS now. Got to give it a try. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not saying never but I definitely do want to make sure that I give them the attention that they deserve when they're ready for it. Um, I don't have the biggest audience, but I know I have a trusted audience and I have to be completely honest with my audience when I do my reviews. That's what I do. And I think right now the Enkido would get destroyed by a review. I want to make sure that they can fix all the little tweaks before I do a review. Great question though. I've actually had that asked a lot. So uh, it is on my radar. Um, I just haven't pulled the trigger yet. Trigger, huh? All right. Thank you all so much for joining me tonight. This was great. Um, I apologize if my voice was a little raspy, the weather outside, pollen is crazy. Um, but I did have a great time. I'm gonna be skating the USD Sways tonight, or this weekend, not tonight. Uh, the Monterey Sways this weekend, I'm gonna switch over to my flat setup, flat 60s uh, on the Prime Frames. Thank everybody so much for the support of the Prime Frames. We have sold out, I think, of the black Prime Frames. I think we've got a couple mediums left. And we're down to like 20 sets of white Prime Frames. It is the first frame that I've had to reorder I'm placing another order next week. It is the first frame that I've had to reorder before the frames left the factory. <laughs> so they are getting packed up this week. Um, apparently there was a holiday, Monday and Tuesday, but I saw pictures of them packing up. So we might be a week delayed. It happens sometimes, um, but they should be ready for pickup on Friday. Um, and I'm gonna be placing my order beginning of next week. So. 
It's pretty crazy that the response was so overwhelming. Again, thank you all so much for the support. Uh, it's a huge endeavor. I'm really, really happy with the frames, and I think you will be too. Um, I can't wait to get them in your hands. I think it's going to be a lot of fun looking at everybody's designs for these walls. I can't wait to start opening up the market so that people can explore different walls, can help these developers um, and try out their designs. Um, I mean, there's never really been a way for us to do this, to have a community of, of parts that people can try and support their developers and things like that. So I'm super excited about it. I hope that you will support uh, as well. Thank you all so much again for uh, joining me tonight and um, hope you get to skate this weekend and I'll see you again in two weeks.